वेलकम टू एन पी टी एल एन ओ सी एन इंट्रोडक्टरी कोर्स ऑन पॉइंट टेपोलॉजी पार्ट टू वी कंटिन्यू और स्टडी ऑफ कॉम्पैक्टिफिकेशन एस 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 ए स्पेशल टॉपिक टूडे वील स्टडी प्रॉपर मैप्स विच आर वेरी क्लोजली हैंड इन ग्लो विद कॉम्पैक्टिफिकेशन The phenomena that we witness in the above example is indeed typical. So let us introduce a definition. A continuous function f from x to y is called proper if, for each compact subset k of y, we have f inverse k is compact. Okay. For example, uh, quite often in a locally compact space, R n and so on, if you have a finite to one map, not always okay. But finite to one map, it will be compact. Infinite to one map will not be compact. Uh, will not be proper. Sorry, I am talking about proper map. So proper maps are. a kind of tools to beat the non compactness the study of functions continuous function from one non compact space to another non compact space often okay so i repeat the definition definition is just says that inverse image of a compact set is compact remember if you have a continuous function image of a compact set is compact comes freely now we want inverse image must be compact so you may say okay you are talking about f being a homeomorphism no 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 f can be you know infinite to one map also no problem but i want inverse image of a compact set be compact okay i am not assuming that is one one map inverse function it is inverse function may not sense but inverse of a set makes sense that's all we are using here okay so here is a theorem why we study the the proper maps in the context of of uh, one point compactifications so immediately there is a there is a result here let x and y be any two locally compact hausdorff spaces let f from x to y be a continuous function then the function f star from x star to y star defined by f star of infinity is infinity prime so i am using the two infinities here one is uh, infinity and other infinity prime okay and f of f star of x is fx for all x in x so f star is an extension of f just sends infinity to corresponding infinity that function is continuous if and only if f is a proper map okay so this is the motivation of defining the properness here okay remember this is what precisely what we did namely phi x which was defined from S n minus one minus the north pole into R n minus one. S n minus one is a one point computation. So on the other side also I take one point computation. Then I extended it by taking infinity to infinity is north pole here on in the domain, and the other one is infinity I have denoted by star. So that was the model. so that became continuous there we could verify it by just purely looking at the inverse image of what happens to the infinity there that's all okay so here we have to do this you know there is no geometry here by merely by definitions of this x star and y star this is also not difficult let us go through this assume that f star is continuous okay if 
f if k is a compact subset of y then k is closed inside y star also right because it's a compact subset of y star and y star is half the r and then f star inverse of k will be a closed subset of x star but closed subset of x star is again compact okay so but you have f inverse of k is nothing but f star inverse of k because k is a subset of y not y star okay so it doesn't have the infinity prime in this way therefore f, f inverse of k is same thing as f star inverse of k so we have proved that inverse image of every compact subset of y is compact inside x under f now let us prove the converse if f is a proper map to show that f star is continuous at infinity this infinity goes to infinity prime so all that i have to do is take neighborhood of infinity prime show that f star inverse of such neighborhoods are open inside x star okay that's what you must show okay so how are the op neighborhood systems at infinity prime described they are nothing but y star minus k where k is a compact subset of y any take a compact subset take the take the the complement that is an open neighborhood of infinity so i have to show that inverse image of this one is open in x star but just now we have seen that this f star inverse of y star minus k is nothing but you know f x minus for x star minus f inverse of k so it's just f inverse of k okay so this is same thing as saying that f inverse of k is closed and compact subset of x because what is this inverse image it is x minus f inverse of k which is x star minus f inverse of k if you include star also because y star is there right right so that is a neighborhood by definition inside x star of infinity here okay since we have assumed that f inverse of k is compact whenever k is compact this will be neighborhood so neighborhoods of of infinity prime inverse image are neighborhoods of of uh, uh, infinity inside x star okay because of the importance of proper maps in several areas of mathematics we shall study them a little more okay we have introduced the properness via this uh, wonderful property of alexander's comp alexandrov's compactification right but the proper maps have their own proper life other than just alexander's compactification so let us do a little more of this one indeed proper maps appropriately the concept of proper maps appropriately adopted in uh, in algebraic geometry is very important because there you don't have hausdorffness at all so all these alexander's compactification etc don't make sense there but proper maps do make sense so let us study them a little more start with any continuous function of topological spaces f from x to y this is called universally closed if for every other topological space z no matter what it is f cross identity of z from x cross z to y cross z is a closed mapping see f cross identity is a continuous function it's a closed mapping for closed subsets of x cross z are taken to closed subset of y cross z so such a definition is universally closed if you don't take z at all x to y if a closed subset go to closed subset it is just a closed map 
okay for all z and for products like this it is closed means universally closed that is the definition by taking z to be singleton space it follows that a universally closed map is a closed map there is no problem it is fairly obvious that the corners will not be true in general okay you look at examples on your own you easily you can find however this will immediately follow from what we are going to prove soon therefore you don't have to worry the following lemma is a step in the right direction take any function continuous function from a to b okay where a is compact and b is hausdorff then that function f is universally closed now it must have rung a bell in in, in inside you right from part 1 we have been studying this kind of situation we have proved that in the beginning from a a continuous bijection from a compact space to a hausdorff space is a homeomorphism then we also proved that any surjective map from a compact space to a hausdorff space is a quotient map right we have been using this not only we have proved it several times now the secret is open this is precisely what it is it is not just a closed map but it is what it is universally closed from a compact space to a hausdorff space a continuous function okay is universally closed okay so let us prove this what you have to do take any space c okay i am now change the situation instead of x y z and so on a b c deliberately so take any topological space c take a cross c to b cross c f cross identity you must show that this is a closed map okay so go to the graph of this function namely a going to a comma f a this is graph of f inside where is that a cross b right so we know that this gives a homeomorphism of a with gamma f this map itself is a homeomorphism the image is the graph the domain is a okay moreover b is hausdorff okay by criterion for hausdorff gamma s will be a closed subset of a cross b so this also you have seen in part 1 not very difficult hence gamma f cross c is a closed subspace you see here there is no map now if this is a closed set crossing with a whole space here there another closed set it will be a closed subspace of a cross b cross c okay so it follows that if you take map a comma c into a comma f a comma c second factor is identity the first factor a comma this one is going to the graph right a comma c going to a comma f a comma c this is a homeomorphism because the first factor is homeomorphism second factor is identity of a cross c on to the closed subspace gamma f cross c because a cross c is closed we have just seen that this gamma f is closed gamma f gamma f cross c is closed that's what we have seen in particular it's a closed mapping because a homeomorphism a homeomorphism is continuous it is open it is closed everything right so it is a closed mapping from where to where from a cross c to gamma f cross c on the other hand since a is compact so far we have not used anything other than hausdorffness of b okay now we come to use a is compact if a is compact the projection map 
ए कमा बी कमा सी टू बी कमा सी दैट इज फ्रॉम अवे फ्रॉम ए दैट इज अ क्लोज मैप so this also we have seen a projection map from any x cross y to x where y is compact is always a closed map now f cross identity is nothing but p composite phi where phi is this map start with a is going to a comma fa comma c then you take the projection to second factor which is fa comma c a, a a goes away a is compact a goes away okay so this f cross identity identity of c so f cross identity is p composite phi phi is a homeomorphism and p is a closed map so closed composite closed is a closed map okay i would request you to pay attention to the technique which goes under this one okay this kind of technique is used in several topological proofs very simple ideas but you know passing to products and so on and vice versa versa okay so pay attention to this yeah so now we have come to the uh, properness huh? let f from x to y be a continuous map of locally compact hausdorff spaces both x and y are locally compact hausdorff then the following conditions are equivalent f is a proper map the map f extends continuously to the one point compactifications the map f is universally closed the map f is closed and for every point y inside y f inverse y is compact okay f inverse y is compact for each point see if this is a proper map singleton wise all always compact f inverse y will be compact but this is much weaker along with just closeness of the map then it is a proper map so this this definition is used quite often okay rather than anything else for proper maps okay so when you don't want to mention compactness at all f inverse of y is put some restrictions like you may ask for f inverse of y to be finite also so such functions are studied okay so this property you pay attention to this this is a wonderful property we you can modify okay so 1 2 3 4 The three different conditions are here. They are all equivalent to properness. Again, proofs are not difficult because we have already developed enough uh, techniques here. So one implies two. We have already seen, right? That was our motivation to introduce something more. The properness was introduced like this. So if it only if it extends continuously by taking infinity to infinity okay so we will have prove that two implies three let us prove okay two implies three from the lemma it follows that f star cross identity from x star cross z to y star cross z is closed okay which is same thing as that uh, x star to y star x star is a compact space y star is a hausdorff space any continuous function is universally closed for every z this is closed which is precisely what i have done that is that was the lemma and now we have concluded this one now let f be a closed subset of x cross z okay 
I have to do something from x cross z to y cross z, not x star. The f star is fine because we have got a compact term. So now I have to come back to x now, right? So let f be a closed subset of x cross z. If f bar is the closure of f, that's a notation, inside x star cross z. So be sure where you are taking because inside x cross z, uh, the closure will be itself. But f bar may not be closed subset of x star z. So you have to take the closure here, right? f may not be closed. So you take the closure of that. Then f cross identity of f bar is a closed subset of y star cross z. So I should put star here, f star. But it is easily seen that f star cross identity of f bar intersecting with y cross z is nothing but f cross identity. The infinity goes to infinity all the time in the first coordinate. So if you remove that, uh, namely put only y cross z here, only points which look like little y cross z, not infinity cross singleton. So then it is f cross identity of f. Okay, use the fact that f star infinity is infinity. The f star of x is f s for x for this part, and f is closed in x cross z. Okay, so we have f star of identity f star cross identity of f bar intersection y cross z is this one. This thing is closed in y cross z, uh, y star cross z. So intersection with y cross z is closed inside y cross z because y cross z is a subspace of x star cross z. Okay. So that proves 2 implies 3, namely we have proved that now f is universally closed. Okay. Now I have to prove 3 implies 4. Of course, universally closed implies closed. So only thing that is left out is inverse image of a single point must be compact. This is what we have to prove. 3 implies 4. All right. Taking z as singleton z, okay. It follows that f is closed. That's what we have seen earlier. Now, given any y inside y, singleton y is closed. Put k equal to f inverse of y. That will be a closed subset of a locally compact Hausdorff space. Right. Hence, it is a locally compact Hausdorff space. This k itself is a locally, we don't know, I want to prove that it is compact. Now, we have k cross z to y cross z, this is a closed map, because this is just like ignoring this uh, singleton y, it is just z going to z, k, whole k going to singleton y. Okay. So k cross z to y cross z is closed. This map can be identified with the projection map k cross z to z. Since this is true for all z, okay, from a previous theorem, it follows that k is compact. See, this is what we have to use now. Projection map from everything is compact, then this is compact is what we have proved. Okay, Michael's theorem. 3 implies 4 is done. Now, 4 implies 1. So, what we have? We have a function which is closed and inverse image of a single point is compact. From that, we have to deduce that the function is actually proper. Namely, inverse image of any compact set is compact. So start with a compact subset of y, put L equal to f inverse of k. Okay. We have to show that L is compact. So take f b the family of all closed subsets of L having the finite intersection property. Remember that if we show that intersection of f is non-empty, 
then it will follow that this l is compact that's uh, uh, that is the thing that we are going to use now we want to show that f has intersection property ip f y p is finite intersection property namely any finite collection of members of f when you take the intersection that is non empty and the entire intersection is non empty is what we have to show by including intersections of any finite number of members of f to this family we may assume that f is closed under finite intersection okay to begin with any family you can take but then you can expand it to include take f1 f2 take the intersection put that also as a member of f it does not uh, change our problem it does not simplify our problem as such but this assumption helps us that's all okay all finite intersections of members of f are um, again inside f you can assume that okay it's closed under finite intersection means that now let curly g be all the images of f under little f f f f belong to f so these are now inside y then g is a family of closed subsets of k y because f is a closed map okay they are all closed subsets of y k because i started everything inside l here so when you take f of that is they will go inside k okay subsets of k with finite intersection property because if you take f1 of to fn here there is a non empty intersection f of those f of f1 into f they will sit inside f1 f2 f3 so this is now again non empty intersection so finite intersection property is true for curly g also therefore g has intersection property that intersection of all the members of g is non empty that y belonging to intersection of all ff where f is inside f okay then put a z equal to f inverse of this singleton y that is a compact subset of k this is the assumption compact subset of x okay actually subset of k also that's the subset of l because this y will be also inside k right, right? in any say this is a compact subset now consider the family h which is f intersection z where f belongs to f so we have this family f already we are taking each member there and intersecting it with this z you see remember this y was chosen in the image of ff right for all f there is a common element y here ff so f inverse of y will be you know there is, maybe there is there is nothing that's what we have to see now so i am looking at f intersection z where f inside f there is at least one one point here in f which belongs to f of that is equal to y right so look at this one this family is a non empty closed subsets of z each f intersection z is in non empty f is closed z is closed is non empty so they are non empty closed family okay closed under finite intersections because we have assumed that g has that property okay so close uh, sorry f f itself has that property right so therefore this is closed in the finite intersection hence it has ip because they are subsets of this compact subset z okay but then the problem is over because this non empty subset is a subset of all the intersections without taking z into consideration so this is a larger uh, intersection so this must be non empty okay so i told you that uh, you know any arbitrary closed map need not be 
a uh, university closed that and so on all right or you can you can use the fact that uh, a non if you have a non compact set then projection map will not be closed and so on right so here is a very simple example by the way a few maybe a, a two years back i taught this course to a couple of students and one of them came up with this idea his name is vidit so i have put his name here okay so here is a very simple example take any space x such that the projection map is not closed okay for example you can take x equal to r any non compact space it this will be do okay x equal to r if you are not sure of that you know that the projection map from x x cross r r cross r to r is not closed okay now take x inside x not inside x one any point the constant map x going to x not is clearly a closed map this we have used earlier right the constant map is always a closed map okay now consider f equal to identity cross the constant map from x cross x to x cross x not this is this is my z whatever you want to say x not so i have taken x cross x to x cross z not say uh, this is y x to y whatever so constant map is there and identity cross constant map i have taken if g from x not cross x not to x is the homeomorphism which ignores this x not okay x comma x not going to x then g composite f which is projection pi1 from x to x okay just look at g composite f what happens f is x comma x not x comma y goes to x comma x not right that is f then then x comma x not goes to x so whole thing x goes to x comma x x comma y goes to x so this is a projection ma map right the first projection map this is the first projection and that is not closed map okay that is so we have started with that one it follows that identity cross c is not a closed map because if f were closed g is closed the composite will have to have been closed the composite is not closed one of them is closed the other one cannot be closed that's all okay so identity cross c is a not closed map where identity of what all that i have taken is that x is a space which is possibly a non compact space for example x equal to r such that the projection map is not closed that is all okay the one point compactification of locally compact hausdorff space is smaller than all other hausdorff compactification remember we have put a, a partial order on compactification right so some of them may not be comparable at all but here is a one conclusion namely the one point compactification is smaller than all of them in particular each one point compactification is smaller than all other one point compactification but we have we have verified arbitrary comp one point compactification uh, one is smaller than the other one is the other smaller than the need, need not imply they are equal that is they, it's not always possible right so be careful about that but smaller makes sense so so what is the meaning of smaller to see that let eta 1 x1 be any hausdorff compactification e and eta x star the one point compactification consider the homeomorphism eta composite eta inverse eta 1 inverse from eta 1 x you come to x then follow eta so you have eta x extend this to a map phi from x1 to x star both of them are uh, uh, uh.
compact equations right so by sending all the points not in eta 1x to the single point infinity so this is a nice way of extending it right you know don't disturb the x part at all so all the points which are outside is x you collapse it to one single point the only thing you have to check is that why this is continuous okay we need to check only the continuity of phi at points other than eta our next in the compact equation right once you do that we have got an inequality this just means that x1 is bigger than or equal to x star that's all okay so let us see why this map is continuous if u is an open neighborhood of infinity in x star then by the definition f which is x star minus u must be closed and compact subset of eta x that is the definition of the x star the alexandrov's compact equation hence eta 1 composite eta inverse of f is a compact subset of eta 1 fx okay you take this this is a homeomorphism okay so f is compact so this is a compact subset of eta 1 x since x1 is hausdorff this will be closed in x1 also okay any compact subset of a hausdorff space is closed observe that without hausdorffness of x1 we would not be able to conclude this so we have compact but why should be closed so hausdorffness we have used that it is closed now hence the phi inverse of u phi is remember it extends the identity map on the entire of x star by pushing all the extra elements to a single point infinity so phi inverse of u is nothing but x1 minus eta 1 composite eta inverse of f that is an open subset because it is a closed subset so we have proved that the the map phi is continuous at all the points away from x star so they are all going to the point at infinity in the second in the in x star so this is this is this completes the proof okay yeah so so one of the followers of this study is the universally closed uh, concept of universally closed functions and proper maps okay there are many other applications of uh, one point compact equations themselves but let us uh, go to other things now so today we will stop here next time we will study another compact equation stone check compactification thank you